Well, warm welcome to today's talk, Friday, the 16th of September. Now, I've been rereading this Lancet report into the pandemic. Very large number of experts contributed to writing it, published in a peer-reviewed journal. And yesterday we looked at the idea that they were leaving well and truly open the lab leak hypothesis, whether that was from China or the United States. And today I want to focus on another aspect of this report, which is basically the, the incredible failures of the World Health Organization, the international community, and individual governments. I mean, basically, I can't get away from the idea that you and me have been really quite severely let down. Now, of course, these very senior organizations, they can mess up at work as much as they like, and there's very little accountability. You and I make a mistake at work, of course, it's a different matter, two completely different levels. So already, I think you can probably see if I've got a bit of irritation from what I'm about to give you. But anyway, let's get straight down. Let's get straight down to the facts as as we have them here. Now, as we looked at a couple of days, yesterday, the day before, Lancet Commission on the lessons for the future uh, from the COVID-19 pandemic. And there's the report there, and that's the peer-reviewed publication there. Now, looking at the WHO response, and, and this is what they say, WHO acted too cautiously and too slowly. No might have done. It's a simple statement of fact. And I think... I think uh, probably pretty well everyone watching this would agree with it. We, we were repeatedly encouraging the World Health Organization to act at an earlier stage uh, on numerous uh, new, numerous items of, of uh, the pandemic. So, but but we'll, we'll look at some of those as we go through. Now, um, simply acted too cautiously, too and too too slowly. There you go. Uh, several important matters. To warn about human transmissibility of the virus. So initially, they were saying that this virus has only spread from animals to humans and there's no ongoing human-to-human transmission. And it took them a long time to realize that that was slightly less than uh, the, the case. But there you go, that was one thing. To declare a public health emergency of international concern. And of course, we went on for ages. Why don't they declare this a pandemic? It took them weeks to declare it was a pandemic. Why? It was so obvious uh, at, at the time from public domain information that, that we had. To support international travel protocols designed to slow the spread of the virus. I can clearly remember uh, sitting in my back room um, it'd be about February, um, early February 2020, saying stop the flights out of China. We have to stop the flights out of China because although we can't stop this pandemic now, it's too late, but we could have done then. It could have been contained then, the same as SARS coronavirus 1 was back in 2002, 2003, but the World Health Organization said nothing about banning flights from China. Some suspected there might have been political reasons for their lack of uh, action how can we possibly know um and and this is a direct quote from the paper this delay contributed to the spread of the virus and limited the possibility for risk mitigation this is what the report said other failings from the who to endorse the use of public face masks as a protective gear now we looked at this at the time now there was no doubt in my mind and we looked at the evidence that face masks were protective in that they were reducing the spread i know we could talk about the types of face masks but they were reducing the spread of the early types the wuhan type probably the alpha type and the delta type now we're in omicrons now that everything's changed we're now in an endemic phase now i believe but at the time that was a good strategy when we were still trying to stop the pandemic because for a long time we were trying to stop the pandemic we now know we can't so this has changed uh, but but no, nonetheless it, it was a failure that they should have done that to recognize the airborne transmission of the virus i mean again we were talking about this for weeks they were still saying that the virus was directly droplet transmitted and that transmission was only possible within a one or two meter range or with direct physical contact but it was obvious from papers I remember viewing, reviewing quite clearly now that the virus hangs in the air for a period of time. I mean, you might remember, but I can't remember quite when it was, but it was early 2020. Not, not that early 2020, actually. But Dr. Tedros said this, this, um, this virus is airborne. And at the same time, Dr. Ryan sitting next to him wrote in a note and passed it. And the next time Dr. Ryan had, had, had the microphone, Dr. Tedros had the microphone, he said, of course, I didn't mean airborne as in paratroopers. 
And it was quite pathetic. It was almost as if they knew what was going on, but didn't want to admit it. But again, how can we possibly know that? But again, no, no accountability for getting this completely wrong for such a long period of time. These delays and vague recommendations to the WHO continued until late April 2021. Let's give one example, one example here. Uh, from there's a letter from uh, 238 scientists in July 2020 asking the WHO to address the airborne transmission of the virus, as we've just said. So this is July 2020. When did the WHO recognise that there was airborne transmission of the virus? April 2021. The end of April 2021. And again, such basic science, the evidence by that time was completely overwhelming. The World's Health Scientific Organization didn't seem to think it was that in important or didn't recognize it. And again, there's been no accountability for this. And by the way, we're paying, we pay the WHO via our uh, taxes. We are major contributors, although other individuals do contribute to it. Of course, not that that would make any difference to what they're saying. We believe and hope. Um, multiple failures of international cooperation as well. Too many governments have failed to adhere to basic norms of uh, institutional rationality and transparency. Um, is, is this the Lancet report saying that governments have been irrational? It looks a bit like that, doesn't it? And certainly they haven't been as transparent as we would like them to be. And the world's major powers have failed to collaborate to control the pandemic. Not only did they fail to collaborate to control the pandemic, they actively fought against each other. The United Kingdom, for example, uh, undercut other countries uh, or overpaid for protective gear so other countries didn't get it. Um, there was actually frank competition between countries. Never mind the brotherhood of nations. We saw very, very little of that, I'm afraid. Uh, people competing or politicians more to the point competing to ingratiate themselves with their own hinterlands specific points uh, lack of timely notification of the initial outbreak of covid19 in the chinese situation of course we know about this no question in my mind at all had national chinese authorities known about this at the time had it not been covered up by local wuhan politicians that there would probably have never been a pandemic now, I'm not saying the Chinese government was as open and transparent as we'd like it to be, but once they found out about it, they did clamp down on it, but it was this whole culture of fear that, that people didn't, uh, didn't want to um, admit that it happened in their areas. And we had that whole disgrace, of course, with, with Dr. Lai and, and the way he was forced to sign a uh, retraction, later dying of the virus, of course, himself. So um, specific points, timely, lack of timely notification of the initial outbreak, costly delays in acknowledging the airborne spread, which we've said, not just the WHO, other governments as well, and implementing appropriate measures at national global levels to slow the spread of the virus. If we'd known how this virus, well, we, we probably did know, but if it had been part of public policy and public government health education, how this virus spread in the early stages, then, well, information can only be a good thing, can't it? You know, information is power. Uh, without that information or with inaccurate or outdated is probably the best we can say information from governments. What were we supposed to do? Um, and the implementing uh, and implementing appropriate measures at national and global level to show, slow the spread of the virus. So that was inhibited because of the lack of clarity from governments. Lack of coordination amongst countries regarding suppression strategies. As we said, open competition rather than simple lack of uh, cooperation. Failure of governments to uh, examine evidence and adopt best practice for controlling the pandemic and managing economic and uh, social spillovers. And of course, these social spillovers had national effects. People suffered greatly as a result of the lockdown measures, for example, as well as from the virus itself and, uh, and international implications, the way that countries didn't account for uh, the uh, the well-being of each other's citizens and again um, in my country I don't think any politicians have been plenty, plenty of politicians have been sacked we sack them all the time uh, but it wasn't for failure of implementing appropriate policy okay there was personal failures for which they've been held to account for in in probably one instance the British Prime Minister but probably virtually none others um, but but not for getting the policy wrong 
it looks like the governments can get the policies as wrong as they like and never mind, just, just move on. Just don't talk about it anymore. But we're talking about it now. This report is talking about it now. Um, shortfall of global funding for low-income and middle-income countries, of course, a chronic problem, but, but particularly obvious, really, during the pandemic. Uh, failure to ensure adequate global supplies of equipment, distribution of commodities, protective gear, diagnostics, medicines, medical devices, and of course, uh, vaccines. And we saw so many examples when vaccines were necessary. Some might argue the risk-benefit analysis has changed now. Um, but uh, when vi uh, vaccines were clearly necessary, again, governments were scouraging around to get as many as they could for themselves. Really quite un dignified i would say lack of timely accurate uh, systematic data on infections deaths viral variants health systems responses and indirect health consequences and it could be that the indirect health consequences are going to kill more people than the pandemic did originally i mean we're just seeing so many health consequences now aren't we in terms of the consequences of the pandemic largely well of course we're seeing sequelae from from the original infections of course but we're seeing other complications complications from treatments complications from interventions complications from the economic effects of, of the lockdowns of course largely in the UK the main obvious factor is is the people just weren't accessing healthcare we've now got six million people on the waiting list waiting for treatments um, it's really been a massive, massive factor in uh, inhibiting normal healthcare delivery. Uh, again, the report raised the. No, it's, it's raised this twice now. Again, the report raised the lab leak possibility. So, because this report actually talked about this in several different places, it really makes you think they might be trying to give a bit of a message here. Of course, we don't know that. They might have just. Um, put it in several different places in the document but there you go that's what 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 uh, what, what they've done uh, again the report raised the lab leak possibility poor enforcement of appropriate levels of biosafety regulations leading up to the pandemic you know if people are going to experiment with these really dangerous viruses they've got to get it right experiments should only be done at the cost of uh, total accountability raising this possibility of the lab leak again Failure to combat systematic disinformation, that was certainly there. Uh, lack of global and national uh, safety nets to protect population experiencing vulnerability. And again, very often it's the most vulnerable in society that have suffered. The elderly, of course, those with comorbidities, but also economically, um, very often it's the most uh, vulnerable that suffer the most. Um, all these are failures. As of May 2020, uh, as of as, as of May the 31st, 2022, 6.9 million reported deaths and 7.2 million estimated deaths from COVID-19. So this has resulted. This ineptitude, or potential ineptitude, or suggested ineptitude from this article, has resulted in millions of deaths that could have been prevented. Um, it, it doesn't get any more serious than than, than life or death. Um, but the, 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 there doesn't seem to be any, any accountability. I mean, it's not really, I'm not interested in accountability. I'm interested in getting it right for next time. But until we admit our mistakes, we can't really get it right for next time until we admit what we've got wrong. And at the moment, it is just simply not happening. Now, this data is coming from the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation. This is their uh, figure. So um, as of the 31st of May, as we said, 6.9 million deaths reported, probably 7.3 uh, uh, million uh, by the end of the year official deaths. But of course, the estimated deaths are much higher than the official reported deaths. And, and the Lancet, again, this staggering death toll is both a profound tragedy and a massive global failure at multiple levels, multiple levels. Sustainable development progress set back by several years. Deep under financing, uh, there's deep under financing of sustainable development goals because what a lot of people did was they spent money immediately on their lockdown measures uh, and other things like that rather than um, putting into longer term investment. And this has also messed up the aims of the Paris Climate Agreement. And uh, I am not a climate skeptic. I think this is happening. 
and uh, it's quite tragic that this has been set back by some time and the economic consequences still paying for we're going to be paying for these lockdowns in decades time there's been a complete mess um, uh, some of these points have been identified by the Lancet uh, uh, review now the, the paper does actually stretch to 52 pages but it is really a good read it is completely understandable it's not written in gobbledygook or jargonese um, any intelligent person can read it and like me you'll find yourself taken aback really quite taken aback by uh, our leadership nationally and internationally so we'll leave it there for now and thank you for watching.